Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we focus on Etude in A minor, Opus 25, number 4. Uh, this Etude um, is again improving a new kind of skill in pianist's technique. Chopin is so uh, fantastically imaginative. He constantly imagines and creates new problems. Uh, and still, we or we've already analyzed 14 etudes, and now we have, excuse me, 15 etudes, and now we have still a new problem, or even more than one. You are very close because I immediately want to show you the left hand and what the left hand must do in this etude because the left hand here is the hero of the night. So let's, I play for you the first part and you just watch and observe the left hand jumping all over the keyboard and trying hopelessly to reach the correct keys. <laughs> for you only the left hand, okay? Because that's uh, much better. So this is what we have to practice uh, when we play this etude. We must practice the left hand, and now I play it for you slower, so that you can uh, actually really see what the left hand must do. So, this is the main difficulty of this etude. From the very beginning to the very end, in a very fast tempo, we have to jump from the left to the right, from the left to the right, all the time, very, very fast. But now, is it the only difficulty of this etude? Well, I thought so when I was younger. When I just listened to this etude without looking at the score, I thought, oh, this is for the left hand, left hand has to jump, it's difficult. But when some time ago I opened the score and I saw what is going on in the right hand, I was shocked. And because I couldn't really catch it when I was listening. Of course, when you know about it, then you can catch it. So hopefully after this video, all of you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, all of you will be able to catch uh, another difficulty that is in this etude. Actually, we have two difficulties, two more, at least two more difficulties. But going a little bit back to the left hand, of course, it's very difficult to uh, to hit the correct key when we are jumping. Uh, but uh, also, when we are moving very fast our hand, we get very tensed. It's a common problem, so we have to also play these jumps with a very, uh, very flexible, very lose hand so this is crucial to play this etude well so that we don't have pain in the hand but what about the right hand well at the beginning um, the first phrase sounds like this we have a kind of melody in, but I wouldn't call it a melody uh, singing, I would call it a hiccup more, <laughs> in the right hand, because we have just short notes 
and the difficulty of this is that these notes are not coming for one for the downbeat they are always coming too late one eight notes too late so they are not coordinated with the left hand because it's it would have been much easier if the etude sounded like this <laughs> It is the opposite, listen. Okay, so mpa, 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 mpa. So right hand always comes on pa. <laughs> Left hand plays mpa, and on pa comes the right hand in a very fast tempo. Upbeat. It's not easy, but that's not the end. This was only the first phrase of the musical period of part A. Uh, so this kind of melody and then we have the consequent phrase. And now I want to show you something that Chopin wrote for the first and only time in all his music. I don't know any other piece and as you know I know almost all Chopin's music. Uh, any other piece where Chopin writes two different types of articulation at the same time in one hand. In one hand. So here is the right hand. Here we have legato. But here we have staccato. What does it mean? It means that the upper voice, so those two fingers, they must sing the melody, legato, so it has to be connected. Whereas all those three fingers are free and they must play staccato together with the left hand. Everything must be played without pedal because we have no space for pedal because the left hand is um pink um pink um pa um pa um pa um pa you know <laughs> so it has to be sh uh, dry secco dry it must be without pedal and this is really a problem only in some moments in this etude Chopin puts uh, pedal marks but in a very few moments when it's extremely wide but Yes, and now we have to do it with the right hand, legato and staccato at the same time. Probably you think, how is this possible? Is it possible? Well, of course it is possible. And now I want to show you. So the right hand here, a little bit too much. The right hand here must play like this. Can you see? No, you cannot see. Sorry. Once again, uh, top note legato, the bottom note staccato. Can you see? Can you see that sometimes I have to change this, the, the finger? For example, here. And then here. Yes. So that so that it is connected. And at the same time, the mm, uh, bottom notes must be played staccato. So it's another problem. We have two different articulations. Uh, different articulation in one hand terrible terrible right terrible so um, it's not easy absolutely not easy but it's possible to do and now it's very tricky what Chopin wrote because when the pianist is playing and when the pianist played the first phrase of the musical period and the pianist is happy. Oh, I can play the first phrase, you know. <laughs> Suddenly, 
Chopin is changing. He is changing the right hand. Now you show me you play legato. And this is playing with us. This is playing with the pianist. Playing with pianist intelligence. Because we have to be intelligent because we have to constantly change the articulation. So either staccato or legato. So that's how sounds the consequent phrase played legato and left hand is the same. Listen. And now, this was part A. And now we proceed to part B. Part B uh, continues playing with the pianists because Chopin is constantly changing the articulation of the right hand. Sometimes he asked us to play staccato, sometimes legato, and it's not very regular. So it's etude also for our intelligence, for, um, for thinking ahead and choosing the correct articulation. It's not automatic etude like the etude, the previous one. You know, well, this was automatic. We just had... And we had all the time the same technique. We just go. Here, constantly we have to change. So let's listen and focus on the articulation now of the part B. Left hand is always staccato, always the same. We don't talk about the left hand, but right hand has legato at first. The first three notes are connected and then immediately after that, we have chopped staccato notes. Listen. And then legato. And then be careful. Legato four notes and then staccato. And legato again. So changing, changing all the time. Let's listen again. part A. And we arrive to part A, A. And now, will it be the same like at the beginning? <laughs> Probably not. Well, this is something very funny. Because for me, it seems like the right hand forgot that at the beginning, when the first phrase was mm, beginning the piece, it was all staccato. And here, the right hand starts legato, but only the first two, fra two short uh, motifs. And then after that, right hand is thinking, hey, wait, but it was all staccato. I have to, I, it's not too late, it's not too late. I still can do it, I still can do it. And then it continues staccato like at the beginning. And you know, it also, it's a very funny moment. And it also makes me think that maybe Chopin himself, when he was composing this, he forgot, you know, he was just, he didn't look at the beginning, so he just wrote legato, and then after then he, after writing four bars, he went back to the beginning and said, oh shit, I wrote a staccato there. What should I do now? I should cross? But then he, he said, well, I don't have time. I have another eight etudes to, six etudes to eight, seven. Yeah. Seven attitudes to compose. No time, no time. I leave it. Let's leave it. Let's make them play like that. And then he continued staccato. Of course, it's a joke. Uh, it's a joke, but it's the same. I have the same problem with doing this all these hundreds videos for you. Sometimes not, well, not everything always is perfect. And I'm not only talking about playing because playing is never perfect, but I'm talking about, you know, camera or the sound or, or suddenly somebody knocked the door or you know it happened everything happened here so anyway instead of starting from the beginning i just uh decide okay i don't have time 
I will leave it like this. I hope you understand and we go. It's just like a live video, you know. So here comes the, the thing. And now just let's have fun and let's listen to this. Do you remember the beginning was all staccato, right? So recapitulation. So when we come back to A, starts legato. And then suddenly The consequent phrase, legato, of course. And then something else. And here starts the coda. So the consequent phrase of um, the recapitulated part A is different and it brings us to coda. And coda is another brilliant and funny thing because in my opinion Chopin loved this etude so much that he didn't want to finish it. It seems like he doesn't want to finish. He goes over again and over again and over 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 again the same short motif to so-called the ending motif and we, we don't know when it will finally end you know that's how it is written so it seems like he had fun composing this piece let's let's listen to this again the whole part a uh, uh, in the recapitulation or actually maybe not i will play for you soon so just the consequent phrase <laughs> So that's how short and how demanding and how funny this study is. It improves a lot the technique of uh, fast moving the hand, of jumping, of being relaxed and of uh, having two different articulations in one hand, which is very difficult to do, especially the staccato, uh, and differentiate the articulation in one hand. Let's listen again and focus on all this, especially the changes of the articulation of the right hand. A little slower. forgot so plays legato and staccato
but I still have to work on it before I will be able to record it on the CD, but I have time. Now we proceed to the next episode, so see you tomorrow, Etude in E minor, Opus 25, number 5, uh, the one that I call it uh, two in one, two etudes in one etude. Take care, bye bye.